it to you know avoid risk? Is it to um, vote you know in a more responsible manner? And that that level, I don't think we always know. Um, we have this um, kind of historic idea of journalism is about putting out information so that people can then choose to be informed without really getting down into why they do that. Or, you know, and I think there is some rethinking of what this is. I was just going to say, do we need to put on the table what is the actual value of investigative reporting? Because it's not as straightforward, I think, as you know, a lot of us tend to think about. So the history of investigative reporting has always been that it's a relatively small audience that takes action on on a story. So a newspaper in the old days might have just hammered on a story and maybe there was some right after the story groundswell of reaction kind of people that put pressure on politicians to change a law, for example. But it's always been, it hasn't ever been the masses. It's always been a targeted audience. Although we never called it that, we never thought about it that way. We were hands off once we wrote the story, whatever had to happen. Um, Maybe that's where you have to focus your attention. You can't be all things to all people. And maybe you have to uh, understand what that segment of the market right. wants and needs, not what it needs, and provide that in whatever form that is appealing to them. Uh, it's, it's clearly not going to be the historical form. So yeah. what, what are the new ones? And I think the reason that's happening is the whole breakdown of mass communication yeah. versus network communication, which is probably closer to what businesses have done in the past. We've been resistant to that because of our historic biases. Well, the opportunity to reach those networks <coughs> has never existed like it has now. So I really think that's crucial to the ongoing strategy. And under, in a sense, that's your customer. It may be a network of people who care about the environment. It may be a good government group, human rights. You know, uh, and I think really strategically you have to think that way. And the other piece I think that's crucial is help people come to solutions, which you know historically news organizations didn't want to get involved in, and connecting people who can who have solutions to other people who are looking for them. And I think that takes a, a form of almost activism. But uh, I know what we're doing, for example, in our distribution, our definition of customer is somebody who might be interested. We, can't, we don't know the answer, but you know, we'll do, we've done a lot on uh, women's health care. And we'll, that story will be in newspapers, they'll be you know, traditional media, but we'll put them, we'll make sure people like Mommy Blogger have them, and Lamaze, or any organization <coughs> or website that you know, cares about women's health care issues. So, <clears throat> it's a very non-traditional way to think. I mean, and you know, our our definition of customer. We're doing something on seismic safety, and I don't know if this works. We're doing coloring books for kids, and we've got people to fund it. And and they're and that's really, a great idea. Well, it wasn't mine, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, but what I'm able to do is say, okay, do it, because I don't know what's right, and it's one of what I call the, you know the, a social media person. Uh, so that's exactly the kind of example of. of the products and services that we were talking about, that school, you know, just yeah. that kind of thing. You no, know, that gets to the, because it's about schools and earthquakes in California, there's lots of issues, but the customer, the end user, might be a 12 year old who's in the classroom and doesn't know what to do. So this is information. It's a solution driven uh, comic book. Uh, but but I, I, I think you're right, and I think that is a new way to think, and it's, but I think the opportunity to create and reach these customers is like really what gives us, I, I'm optimistic about the ability to get the solution, whereas before if you had a newspaper and you put it in, in your market, boom, that was it. Do you have a sponsor for that? Well, uh, I just, well what's happening is as people find out about it, they want it. So we thought we might print a few hundred and now we're into the thousands. So we have to find a sponsor. <laughs> One thing I think is important to point out is that we are actually in a, a both a political and economic climate that is actually looking favorable towards things like accountability. And I think that, take the right wing, left wing thing out of it for a second, I think a big driver between the, you know, the Tea Party movement, whether you like it or not, is the fact that there's a perception out there that there's tremendous amount of bloat and that, that, that there's an inefficiency in the way that our culture is built right now. And I think that, you know, generally when you have demand for, for data that's around accountability, and you're in the accountability business, you would think there's going to be a way to bridge it. We are, we are facing, however, 
uh, the politicization of what the media is and what the media does, and, and we've got to get through that. But, but it does seem there's, there's economic opportunity from that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, can I go? Another example that I've heard, which sounds Could you repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said was controversial that the members are trying to Some do. members are, are looking, and you, you probably know more better than I do, but some members are actually looking at doing bespoke investigations. So a corporation would like, not an investigation like about an individual necessarily, but you know, reporting or, or a report that is then shared within that company, not for, for, for public. Uh, so sort of one-on-one -on -one <coughs> private investigation yeah. for a corporate entity. Mm -hmm. So, Frank, what, what I wanted to ask you earlier, you were making a comment about foundations and how incredibly competitive and even more so they are. So I just wondered if you had any thoughts on, maybe especially as some of these entities grow, the idea of LC, LC3s, or I guess there's a new uh, B Corp thing coming up uh, as a way to get different types of investors who are still socially conscious. So I was just wondering what you thought about that angle. Well, I think they're always socially conscious investors in the LC3. I mean, they're just mechanisms for, for doing it. Um, they'll always be out there. I just, I get concerned that that's not sustainable. And that any kind of, anybody who's, who's putting money in like a foundation for a particular reason basically to provide seed money, that I understand, but they, with a few exceptions, they don't want to be in there all the time. Um, there are certainly social investors. Um, if you go back into the middle 90s, there were funds set up for doing social investing. A lot of people jumped into that. They're all dead. They've all died. So I'm just not sure what the attention span is of social investors. Hmm. Working assets, that's when I remember, right? Like a fund where it was all, yeah. everything was socially yeah. responsible. They're still around. Yeah. Not many. Yeah, not, not many. Do you, Frank, do you, I think, uh, I mean, a, a big, and maybe this is not true, but to me, a, a huge you know, thing that's obviously changing everything is technology, and the ability to communicate and connect people. So based on your theory, I mean, isn't that sort of changed the dynamic tremendously in well, terms of some of these potential models and the sustainability question? If you can get this massive audience you can reach now engaged? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. It's what I'm, the point I w wanted to make and have made, I think, is somebody's going to figure this out. Morgan is. <laughs> <laughs> and the technology is going to help. But that is not the solution. That's just a way of making things differently, distributing and whatever. They'll, they'll be there and they'll be tools. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to provide something that people want and need. And I don't know we have quite figured that out yet. But there's a difference in want and need. 
Yeah, I, I would say need, okay? Let's just focus on, you're going to solve a problem for a consumer or a customer. Let's focus on that. Right. You know, I can see, I thought, I think that Andy Carbon thing on NPR, Twitter, he was doing some really cool stuff during the Egypt and continues to do this amalgamating stuff. And I think that he tossed in a few pledge drive type things on Twitter. I mean, I think his reporting actually helped drive some funding to public radio during this time in the past month or two. And I think that's something to look at of, of making sure that you're using all the ways to reach your audience and showing them that, hey, we've got this thing on Frontline tonight, and if you like it, here's where you can help us do more of this or, you know, get more information out about it. I think, you know, people are divided about, I think, sometimes about profit versus nonprofit, and, you know, I wonder if the nonprofit thing isn't at, at one level a reaction to the horrific corporate structure of media in the past where you had to make 25% net and you know and now let's just go the whole other way. Well there's no question the collapse of legacy media has accelerated and focused the foundations in the short term on funding this and you know in two years it could be the flavor of the month the flavor of the cycle and we all understand that. <coughs> I think you should do um, one of those solicitations for money for that story. That should be your story. Look how fascinated we all were with that question. <laughs> I think it would be a great experiment. Put it up there. And people would pay for that I story. think she would just like you to find and then you could the, find the, your cat, the cat, the, the fishing <laughs> cats. I starting with that project. <laughs> I think I'd use that story to find your cat thing. <laughs> um, what if, if there are no more questions, we could take a brief break for uh, back to the there's lunch stuff over there, and we've got a setup for um, this next guy who is the assistant news director in San Diego and is doing a deal with Voice of San Diego, and we're going to get him on Skype, so it'll might take a few minutes to get that set up. Thank you. That's on Thank you. Thank you.